What's going on everybody? Noah from Stage 3 Motorsports here and today I'm going to show you how to install a spacer leveling kit on your 2021 or 2022 F-150. So real quick before we get into it, I'm going to be installing our Stage 3 2.3 inch leveling spacer on this, which is kind of our recommended spacer kit for this truck. But this install will work if you have a two inch or a one and a half inch or even a two and a half inch spacer. It's kind of the same steps all the way through. So no matter what kit you have, you should be able to still follow along. Now, with that being said, the process I'm going to use to install this is a little different than what you'll typically see online for people doing spacer installs. But I believe that this is a better and easier way to do it that does less damage to the truck. So I'm I'm essentially going to drop the lower control arm and leave the axle and everything attached that way there's less risk of damage to the axle itself and we can also leave the upper control arm attached to the knuckle so it does simplify some things along the way but with all that being said let's get right into it we're going to start things off by using a 10 millimeter socket to remove this screw here that's holding the bracket for our brake lines and abs and everything and then we're also going to use a 21 millimeter socket to back the nut off for the sway bar end link so that way we get a little bit more slack and there's some more room to work with here Next up, we're going to grab a 21 millimeter wrench and loosen up these nuts here on either side of the upper control arm. You don't want to remove them, just loosen them enough to take some of the tension off the bushing so that way this isn't spring loaded and that's going to help us down the road with getting the strut in and out. So we'll slide the box end over here and break this free. On the back side of the upper control arm, the nut is sometimes blocked off by some of these vacuum lines and wiring harnesses. So you may want to just grab a little pry tool here and pop these out of the way. And that should give you enough room to squeeze your wrench in there and still break that loose. Now we need to loosen up these three nuts that are holding the top mount of the strut, but you're going to use an 18 millimeter socket or wrench on all of these. And we just want to loosen them up so there's some threads exposed underneath, but we don't want to completely remove it because we do want these to be here to support the top of the strut once we've removed the lower control arm and everything. So let's just get them loosened up for now and then we'll come back to this later. Moving all the way down to the bottom of the lower control arm, we're going to have two nuts that we need to remove that are holding the bottom of the strut. And you're going to use an 18 millimeter deep well socket to get these off. Then once those are clear, we can work on the lower control arm itself. To remove the lower control arm from the frame mounts here, we're going to need a 27 millimeter socket to loosen up this nut. And then you're going to want to use a 21 millimeter wrench to hold the bolt on the other side. And I will say that these nuts are on here pretty tight. So if you break this free, you're going to want a breaker bar and probably some sort of extension bar on top of that to get the leverage that you need. I already cracked this one loose a little bit, but once these are out of here, we can do the same thing on the other mount for the lower control arm and it should just drop free from the truck. And before I tap the bolt out of here, let's loosen up the other side so that way we can take them out at the same time. With the lower control arm completely out of the way, the strut is just hanging by the top nuts now. So I'm gonna pick it up from the bottom, take some of the tension off, we'll pull these nuts off here, and then you should be able to drop it straight down between your tie rod and your axle. It's a little bit of a tight squeeze, but you have a lot of vertical room to work with, so it should come out without too much fighting, and then we can work on getting the spacer in there. With the strut out of the vehicle, now we can install our 2.3 inch leveling spacer. And you're gonna have two, obviously one for the driver, one for the passenger side. They're actually identical for the most part. They're not side specific and they only fit on one way. So you really can't install these wrong, which is nice. But depending on the kit you have, if you have a different type of spacer, you'll wanna be careful about that. The nice thing about this 2.3 inch kit that we sell is that it does actually have a bit of an offset built in. So if you look, the lower ring and the top ring are, are slightly shifted and that's actually done on purpose. That's not a defect. And what that does is basically helps correct the alignment once you put this in. So that way the truck can be dialed back to factory spec a lot more easily and you don't have to fight or end up with kind of a 
messed up alignment that isn't truly to spec once you get the vehicle put back together. So anyways, we're gonna take this, pop it on here. Like I said, it really only fits on one way. So you'll just kind of scoot it around till you can get the holes to line up. And typically you have to do give, give a little bit of a tap with the mallet here for it to want to seat all the way down. But the other thing is that it'll have some nylock nuts here on the top. These are going to move to the studs that are on the top hat of the strut. So we'll thread these on here, tighten them down as best we can. And then we're going to use the factory hardware once we get it back in the vehicle to tighten the top hat to the truck. So before I bring the strut with the new spacer up into place and shove everything in the truck, I slid the floor jack underneath the knuckle down here and I'm gonna pump that up to lift the knuckle, which is gonna move the upper control arm up a little bit. And that just gives us some more room up here to work with because obviously the top hat's quite a bit thicker with the spacer on top of it. So once I've got that lifted, we'll squeeze this in. It's typically a bit easier with this on here to drop it down between the axle and the tie rod and then lift it back up into place instead of trying to come entirely from the bottom. So that's the process we'll use. And then I can use those factory nuts to hold the top once I've got it kind of locked in. And with it hanging, then we can go to the lower control arm and start piecing everything back together. So let's give it a shot. Now we need to get these two studs that are in the lower mount of our strut back into the holes in the lower control arm. Once those pass through, we can put the nuts on and then we'll get the control arm up into the frame mounts. We're finally to the point where we can bring the lower control arm back up into the frame mounts. And there's not a dead set good way to do this, but I found that typically using the floor jack to lift under this bend right before the bushing is a pretty decent way to get these up into place. And then you can use a big screwdriver or even the bolt to kind of hold one side as you get it in and then move to the other side and do the same thing, lift under the bend, kind of get it positioned. And once you have it even, you can push the bolts all the way through and then we'll tighten it down the same way that we took it out. So. It's not too complex of a concept, it's just a little bit of work to get it to fit exactly right. If you're having trouble getting the front mount in place, you can move to the rear mount of the lower control arm and sometimes getting this one in is a little bit easier and will help the front to seat properly. So just depends on your truck or your situation. We've got our lower control arm all locked in, so we're in the final stages now. The last couple things we need to tighten are gonna be the top three nuts for the strut. Then we're also gonna tighten those two nuts that we loosened up on either sides of the upper control arm. And then we can pop our sway bar end link back in, as well as the bracket that's holding the brake lines and vacuum lines. And once all that's dialed in, we'll hit everything with the torque wrench and then we should be good to go.
The very last step here is to take a torque wrench and just tighten up a lot of the nuts and bolts that we loosened up when we took this apart. And everything's gonna go back to factory spec. So you should be able to find it in your manual or online too if you want specs on every single nut and bolt. But we'll lock this all down and then we can get this truck back on the ground. So that's going to be a wrap on this spacer leveling kit install. Hopefully this was a helpful video for you. But before you take your truck back out on the road, one last thing I want to mention is that you need to have this professionally aligned after you get it installed. And that goes for any spacer kit, no matter what size you have, you want to make sure that you take this to a shop and they dial it in or else you're going to get some really bad tire wear and you'll probably hear it scrubbing and it may not even steer straight on the road since we've altered quite a bit of the suspension geometry. So just make sure you get that done. But with that being said, with this spacer kit, obviously we went for the 2.3 inch system and we've got a set of 34 inch nitto recon grapplers that are mounted to ford performance 20 inch wheels that are on here and i think the stance looks really good but the reason that i mentioned the specs on this setup is that this is a pretty simple entry level setup that you could do without having to swap the wheels now Obviously, like I said, ours are Ford Performance wheels, but if you use the factory 20 inch wheel with that tire, you can run this without having to cut crash bars. You don't have to make any insane modifications to your bumper or fenders. It's very straightforward and it's not gonna rub and it gives you a little bit more of a practical off-roady look without having to make significant alterations to the truck. With that being said, if you're interested in checking out any of the parts that we used in this video or those wheels and tires, we'll have links down in the description. They're gonna shoot you over to our website. And as always, thank you guys for watching and I'll see you next time.